Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I'm not exactly sure what to call this Bible, uh, Bible study, but it's going to take a look at ancient mankind and his interaction with the fallen angels. We're going to cover a number of topics and one thing I want to start with is, when did the angels fall? Now, I've covered this in some previous studies, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail and depth. But let's take a look. This might end up being a multi-part series. So I was originally just going to do something on flight in ancient times and I'm not talking about angels with wings or what have you but um, possibly airplanes or air travel or space travel before Christ now you think oh boy Bob what are you talking about here well, let's take a look at something very interesting. All right, let's take a look to start off at Deuteronomy chapter 30. Was flying or and or space travel foretold in the book of Deuteronomy? I mean, you're talking... Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is considered the fifth book in the Bible. It's attributed to Moses. I mean, you talking way back. So let's take a look at Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse... Did you know that God blesses those that obey him and curses those that don't? Hmm, well, maybe we should find out what things we need to do for the blessings and avoid those things for the curse. You think that's a good idea? How many preachers talk about this kind of stuff? Um, I've only heard maybe one or two in my life. And uh, they're the most hated, reviled people among the demonominational churches. Of course, they're not churches. What, what they actually are is state-incorporated, registered, tax-exempt businesses masquerading as churches with the name church in the title. So, but uh, yeah, if you're interested in the uh, blessings and the curse, uh, you know, send me an email or something or comment and I will uh, do my best to get you the uh, study that I did on the blessing and the curse. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse, which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations. Do you know that word nations there is the same word as Gentiles? Same word. King James translators translated the same word uh, two different ways. Sometimes they translated it as nations. Other times they translated it as Gentiles. Same word. Just remember that. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee. And shalt return unto the Lord thy God. That's a good advice. Return to the Lord thy God. And shalt obey his voice. Oh boy, obey. And people, you know, it's funny. They, got a, uh, they call this a heresy. Obeying the Lord is a heresy among a lot of these demon nominational churches. They call it lordship salvation oh my god you're earning your salvation by trying to obey the lord 
and that's what they call it. They, they'll tell you it's a work, not grace, but a work, and you're trying to earn your salvation. I didn't know that being obedient to the Lord was, was earning your salvation. Ugh, they're idiots. No, they're not idiots. They know who they serve. They serve the devil. And shalt return unto the Lord, and shalt obey his voice, according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul. Listen carefully. And then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee. The United States hasn't seen captivity yet, but they're going to. And have comp compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all nations whither the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. Now there's some people that will tell you that that little Israeli state, that little Zionist, Kabbalistic, Kabbalah-loving Zionist state in, over in the Middle East, that this is the, uh, this verse being fulfilled, I don't think so. Because I'll tell you what, when the Lord returns, then he's going to gather the nations, the nations together. And I tell you what, I haven't, I don't know about you, but I haven't seen the Lord yet. So Jesus, you know, they, 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 uh, when the Lord returns, it is said that every eye will see him. Well, guess what? I haven't seen him, so I don't think so. that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. Okay. Listen carefully. If any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven, Huh, what? If any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. You ever played fetch with a dog? You take a stick or a ball and you play fetch. You throw it, the dog grabs it and brings it back. Well, that's what the Lord's going to do. He's going to fetch us. What do they mean, the outmost parts of heaven? If any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. So, what does this mean? Does this mean if you're out flying around in an airplane? Or does this mean space travel? I don't know. It says the outmost parts of heaven. Verse 5. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. Hmm. Isn't that what Jesus said? To love thy Lord? Let's take a look. Alright, let's take a look at Matthew chapter 22 verse 34. Now, if you don't know it, Pharisees are Jews. All Pharisees are Jews. All Sadducees were Jews. Not all Pharisees were Sadducees, and not all Sadducees were Pharisees. They were just different denominations. And you've got to realize something. Modern-day Jewry will tell you that they are the direct descendants of the Pharisees 
unchanged, basically. Now, they might have added some new things, but they are basically the spiritual descendants of the Pharisees. Because the Pharisees held what was called the tradition of the elders. And Jesus condemned them. And if I remember correctly, it was in Matthew chapter 10 that Jesus condemned them for their traditions of the elders. In other words, they put the words of the rabbis over and above the words of God. And the thing was, these rabbis supposedly were explaining what God really meant, but what they did was, as they turned it upside down, and Jesus said, well, you make the word of God of none effect through your traditions. Okay, in Mark chapter 7 and verse 9, and then we're going to skip to verse 13. And he, who, he who, Jesus, and he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. Verse 13. Making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such like things do ye. All right, let's go back to Matthew chapter 22 and where the Lord said he would gather you and, you know, write. Well, let's take a look. Matthew 22, verse 34. But when the Pharisees had heard that he, Jesus, that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Now, the Pharisees are Jews. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, a doctor of the law, okay, asked him a question, tempting him, trying to trick him, tempting him and saying, Master, what is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Hopefully you don't live next door to a bunch of Satanists. It'll be easier to do that, right? On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. See, the Pharisees had hundreds of little laws. Jesus had two. Love the Lord and love thy neighbor. I mean, that's it. You know, if you can love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, you got it. You got it, buddy. All right, let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Now, let's read verse 6 again. Deuteronomy 30, verse 6. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed, your children, to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that thou mayest live. Hmm. So, what does it mean in verse 4? It says, If any of thine be driven out unto the outermost, outmost parts of the heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. Hmm. Let's take a look. Yeah, I could make a Bible study just out of heaven. Now, there's several heavens. There's several. Paul talked about more than one. Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Verse 8. Genesis 1, verse 8. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Okay. Verse 14, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of heaven, lights in the firmament of heaven, to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and for years. All right, uh, firmament. When you look up the definition, it means the heavens or the sky especially when regarded as a tangible things. 
synonyms, the sky, heaven. So, all right, uh, let's see. So it could be either the air, you know, in the sky, or it could be outer space. I mean, so if it's talking about lights in the sky, I mean, you're obviously talking about the sun and the moon. Now, I don't want to get into our arguments with people about, you know, whether we landed on the moon or not. Uh, all I know is the government lies about everything. You know, the moon landing could have been a hoax. I don't know. I wasn't there. Uh, if you believe we did land, that's great. If you believe we don't land, that's great too. Uh, if you want to believe in a flat earth, that's fine too. But guess what? Does it matter? Did Jesus say, believe on me in the flat earth and thou shalt be saved? No, he didn't. Believe on me and the moon landing was a hoax and thou shalt be, lee, uh, be saved? Uh, no. No. In Genesis chapter 15 and verse 5, God's talking to, the Lord God is talking to Abraham. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven. And tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed, or children, be. So, you know, look at the stars. And that's what your children are going to be like. Now, I don't know about you that live in the city, but I'll tell you what. When you go out in the middle of nowhere where there's no street lights, no lights at all, just the stars in the heaven, there's millions of them. All right, let's take a look at Genesis chapter 22 and 17. That in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed, or children. I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Now, question. When have the Negroids of Africa ever possessed the gates of their enemies? Uh, when has the Europeans possessed the gates of the enemies? I mean, let's face it, England, there was a time when Spain and England ruled the seas. I mean, absolutely ruled the seas. Uh, they possessed the gates of the enemies. Suez Canal, the Panama Canal, the Gibraltar in the Mediterranean. I mean, you know, what can I tell you? All right, Genesis 26 and verse 4. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Um, question. When is the black race ever blessed the nations of the earth when have the antichrists that call themselves Jews ever blessed all the nations of the earth and let's face it the white race has been farmers haven't we as a group fed the world I mean let's face it Bangladesh had a, a flood, and the United States sent tons of food, sent tons of food to Africa, tons of food to South America. I remember there was an earthquake down in Latin America, South America, and tons and tons of food just went down there. I mean, uh, if that's not a blessing, I don't know what is. Now, I'm not saying everything they've done has been good. We have wicked, evil leadership. And they've done a lot of things wrong, especially what's going on in the Middle East. But um, what can I tell you? All right, so. I mean, I, I think it's kind of interesting here. 
that um, in Deuteronomy 30 and verse 4, if any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven, flying in a plane, uh, outer space, space travel, Star Trek anyone, I don't know. From thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. I mean, I think I, I was, somebody pointed this verse out to me, and I've read it, I've read it many times, but I never, I, it, it never, somebody pointed it out to me, and I saw that, and I was like, wow. I mean, you're talking probably about 4,500 years ago this was written. So, was there flight back prior to the flood? I don't know. Let's take a look. Now, the um, I'm still on YouTube, and I've got a playlist. I've got a bunch of playlists. If you go to my homepage and you look up playlists, I've got... A lot of playlists. I don't know for how long. I'm also on Minds.com, M-I-N-D-S.com, and I'm also on BitChute, B-I-T-C-H-U-T-E. And I'm also on what was Real.Video, but now they've changed the name to Bright Eon, B-R-I-G-H-T-E-O-N.com. And they're working Bright Eon which is Mike Adams, he's working on putting together playlists. When he does, I've got a whole bunch of, a big job ahead of me. I mean, I've got 600 and something Bible studies up on Bright Eon. It's taken me weeks to upload all those, and I'm going to have to go through them all and add them to playlists when they finally have playlists. But right now, I've tried to put the Bible studies together uh, so they're close to each other, but I don't know. It's just, it's a lot of work. So right for right now, as of October 23rd, 2018, I'm still on YouTube as far as I know, and I've got playlists. So if you're interested, you could look up the Sons of God playlist, Genesis 6, What Happened. The point I'm making here now is when were the angels created and when did they fall? And I've done this in some previous stuff, but I'm going to just go over this a little bit. In Job 38, verse 1, Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? In other words, who are you that, you know, you're talking about things that you don't know nothing about? Gird up thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. In other words, put, put your pants on, on like a man, and come talk to me. Verse 4. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if you if thou hast understanding. In other words, where were you when I made the earth? I mean, you didn't even exist. That's the answer to that. Verse 5. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest, or who hath stretched the line upon it? And that's a construction term, people. You know, you stretch out a line. When you're building a building, you stretch out a line. And then you lay all the bricks according to that line. Verse 5. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? And just remember something. Christ is the cornerstone of the heavenly kingdom that's coming. Verse 7. Now he's talking about the create the foundations of the earth, the creation of the earth. That's the topic of what we've been reading. 
Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measures thereof? If thou knowest, or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? Verse 7. When the morning stars sang together. Now, who are these morning stars? Well, I say they're angels. And people will argue and say, oh, no, that's not true. You know, the stars in the sky, they're singing. Did you know that the stars up in the sky sing? I mean, they might make noise if you have the right instruments, but um, do they sing? I don't think so. I think this is a figure of speech, you know, and it's talking about angels. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Now, why were they shouting for joy? They were shouting for joy when the, God, when the Lord God created the heavens and the earth. And I think the morning stars and the sons of God are the same thing. And after all, who was the father of the angels? God was. Therefore, they are his sons. Doesn't that make them the sons of God? At least in the Old Testament. Now, in the New Testament, when we are born again of the Spirit, we, are, we become the sons of God. But when you're talking about the Old Testament, sons of God refers to angels. Think about that when you read about Genesis chapter 6, when the sons of God came in under the daughters of men and they had giants. And people will argue and say, oh, no, 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 the sons of God are not angels. Well, they'll tell you, oh, well, they're believers. And then the daughters of men were unbelievers. And then believers marrying unbelievers have giants for children. Think about Goliath. Yeah, and then God said, uh, when they came in under the land, God said, kill them all. You know, the Canaanites. Does that make any sense to you? It doesn't make any sense to me. The morning stars and the sons of God were angels. Now, the thing is, when you look at the six days of creation, and some people say that there were eight days of creation, I don't see that in the Bible. I, I really don't. I, I think God made everything in six days. All right. Genesis 1.31 And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Now, the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth day does not record God creating the angels. And if the sons of God and the, and the um, stars, the morning stars, were shouting for joy and singing, they had to be created before the earth was created. So they had to have been created before the earth was created. This is an important point, people. I mean, when you think about it, uh, you know, God didn't create these angels after he created the earth. They were in existence when the earth was created. Uh, the Bible doesn't say on the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, or sixth day that God created the angels. So they had to have, these angels had to exist before the earth was made. Okay, now I think I'm going to make this the end of part one. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.